Good morning, Denny. It's Thursday, January 8th. What you're looking at right now is a rearranging of my personal book collection. Did you know the last person to speak the Cornish language died in 1777 and was named Dolly Pithreath? But also in 1789, with the death of William Bondinar. But still, John Davy claimed to be the last speaker of the language when he died in 1891. Did you know, in 1962, an elephant named Tusco died in the Oklahoma City Zoo after coming down from an LSD trip? The LSD didn't kill him. The tranquilizer did that. Scientists used the tranquilizer to bring him down, and the rapid change in his heartbeat turned him in. Did you know Sir Isaac Newton's last word when he died on March 31st, 1727 were, I don't know what I may seem to the world. But as to myself, I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself now and then in finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than the ordinary, while the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. These small tidbits are all true information from my personal library. My non-fiction section, to be more precise. But all of it pales in comparison to what lies in my fiction section. Those books hold larger truths about the worlds they're about, and our own world. The imagination is a funny thing. Some people like J.R.R. Tolkien use it to tell stories about wizards and dragons that end with parties. Others like F. Scott Fitzgerald or J.D. Salinger use it to illustrate the struggles that the upper class can have. Still others, like Orson and Scott Card, use the imagination to send us messages that children can change society for the better, or for the worse, depending on how we use them. And finally, I want to talk about poetry. I have one small blue book of poetry in my collection, with some poems from the 20th century up to the 1990s. My favorite poem is one by Robert Frost called, A Question. It goes like this. A voice said, look me in the stars, and tell me truly, men of earth, if all the soul and body scars were not too much to pay for birth. Writing is a noble thing, and I love all aspects of it. I love fiction, nonfiction, and most of all, poetry. I think it blends the line between the two quite well. Poetry tends to get a bad rep. Most people label it as fancy frou-frou, and from my experience at least, men think it's girly. But I feel that what Robin Williams says in Dead Poets Society is true. Language was invented for one reason, to a woman, and that endeavor, ladiesness, will not do. Another one of my favorite poems is by a woman, Emily Dickens, and it goes like this. To make a prairie, it takes a clover and one bee, one clover and a bee, and reverie. The reverie alone will do, if bees are few. This poem reminds me that, given enough time, Anything will happen. But I also like the nice nature imagery of a field and the bee pollinating it. I set out this morning only to rearrange my bookshelf, but I ended up ranting about books. And I want to remind you, Denny, you have 51 weeks left of me. Well, here's the fruits of my labor. A organized by color bookshelf with my few Notable exceptions for being too big for their respective places. There it is. All organized. I'll see you tomorrow, DFTBA.